This morning we're helping families get ready for back to school and on that checklist should be a visit to the eye doctor. Doctors say that this is a good time for children to get a checkup to help them succeed in the classroom. Dr. Stephen Reed is the president of the American Optometric Association. He's here to tell us what mom and dads need to know. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Dr. Reed. So of course, tell us why should an eye exam be on the back to school checklist? Oh my goodness, it's so important, so important. It's not just on the checklist, it should be circled twice and highlighted, it's really that important. And it's that important for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, it's important for development because when a child is born, their vision is not 20-20 and that's normal. But as the child grows and develops physically, well, their vision does the same thing. And so it's important to make sure that through that development process, we find any potential issues, we fix those so that the child can continue to develop Normally, now, if something is not caught at that stage, well, that can actually turn into a, a more permanent problem later on once that molding process stops. And it's also very, very important for learning. I mean, you can imagine trying to do your job without, say, glasses or contacts if you need them. Well, imagine trying to learn in the classroom. It's, it's, it's very difficult. And so it's estimated that, you know, 80 percent of what a child learns is through their vision. And so we want to make sure the child comes in, that we examine them completely. Hey, if we get a great bill of health, we're happy to see that. But if there is a problem, we want to fix that and address it to make sure the child continues to learn at the proper rate. Now, what actually could um, impact a child if a child does go undiagnosed but have some serious eye problems? Yeah, well, certainly anything from a, a refractive condition, which we call, well, you know, your things you're used to, like nearsightedness or farsightedness. I mean, children can have eye diseases as well. And so you want to make sure that those, those are addressed. Um, the, the sneakiest thing I believe we see would be uh, focusing or accommodative kind of issues because say a child has more farsightedness uh, than they, they should. Well, that, that farsightedness will fool you because when they're outside, they're seeing great on the playground and they're, they're acting like a normal child, but it's not comfortable, say, to read or, or to do near work. So, so they have sometimes an aversion to learning. And, and so the, the problem with that is not only does it affect their actual learning, but sometimes those children get labeled as, as slow learners or they get labeled as having some kind of a behavioral vision disorder. So anyway, these, these are more common things, but they're easy to address if we just examine and find them. I recently did a story here with my family focus stories about, you know, another expert said that parents should try to reduce screen time with their children, of course, over the summer. Do you think screen time has an impact on a child's vision? Uh, yeah, absolutely it does. So the way the normal eye works is anything that you look at up close, the internal eye muscles have to focus so that you can see that. And it's like, like focusing a camera. Well, our eyes are not made to stay focused up close all day long, which if you think about that, children and well, adults too, they'll switch from one device to the next. And so when your eyes continually stay focused up close, it, it's, it's, it, it can cause eye strain, it can cause uh, headaches and other, well, your brain says, you know what, we're not gonna deal with this. Let's just make you nearsighted so that up close is comfortable. Oh. Well, now the child is nearsighted and they can't see far off and now they have to wear glasses or contacts you know, from, from here moving forward. And so we've actually seen a double in the incidence of nearsightedness or myopia in this decade versus the last. And I would say a lot of that is attributed to screen time. And real quickly, I know a lot of times when it comes to, you know, I guess eye exams, a lot of people say, oh, my child had a vision screening, but that's, a, that's different from an actual comprehensive test, right? Absolutely, yeah. What is done in a vision screening is about 5% of the testing done in a comprehensive examination. And so the problem with that is there are children who have vision issues that get missed. And a letter is sent home to the parent. The parent sees this, oh, my child passed the school screening, meaning that they must be fine. They don't need a trip to the eye doctor. And, and that's when it becomes a big issue because the child does have a problem that needs to be addressed. And so we say, look, if, if, if what we do covers 100%, and we're going to find the problem. Let's just let's just start out with a comprehensive examination for children.